So if you're a webinar, it only starts as a practice session.
I guess we should test the microphone, see if I hear it. You can hear it. That's good. <laughs> uh, and the people in video land hear it. Yes. All right. No one's, all right. Thumbs up in Pennsylvania. Thumbs up in Florida. How's Florida doing? Atlanta. Georgia, Alabama. <laughs> We're just doing Heart Sutra, right? So, Harry, why don't you read in Heart Sutra? They practice the perfection of wisdom. Also, practice the activity to found perfection of wisdom. Putra, so Putra, the son of lineage, daughter of lineage, to practice the activity of found perfection of wisdom. And this, repeatedly beholding those five arguments, also is empty of inherent nature. Emptiness is form, emptiness is not other than form. Form is also not other than emptiness. Same way, being emission. Consciousness 
to building It is like that. Usually do the request for teachings too. If you don't have it there, but you know, when you can't remember exactly the wording of a prayer, don't worry, you just remember the meaning. So then you make up the words. So what would be the request? Right. So please turn the wheel of Dharma and all its aspects, blah, blah, like that. There it is. There you go. Yeah, good. It's a good exercise um, with you know, different um, narrative meditations that sometimes we call prayers uh, to make sure you get the essence and then you can uh, say it out loud to yourself uh, with uh, different words. So sometimes uh, in the past, I've asked people to do that, you know, like, okay, so you haven't memorized this English version of uh, the seven prayer, but uh, how would you say it in your own words? If you go, I don't know, um, then there's a problem there. You haven't been getting the meaning, right? So memorizing certain things um, is important. Um, the emphasis on memory is important, but uh, it isn't really even in uh, uh, traditional monasteries. It's not about remembering the words, it's remembering the meaning. And the famous thing is, it's not about remembering the uh, provisional meaning, you know, it's remembering the definitive meaning, right? So we should, with all the prayer from refuge to the heart sutra, be able to kind of put it in our own words. That might be a good test. So, <laughs> oh yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, 
I've been a little bit behind the sending people the um, questions I'd like to ask about the tantrika and buddha nature, but uh, now I'm uh, feeling a little bit better. <clears throat> and uh, we maybe have uh, some more uh, getting our audio visual thing uh, fixed. So uh, now we're getting some feedback maybe, right? Jill? Is that right? A little feedback? Hmm. So uh, for those who haven't been here for a while, uh, we've, uh, of course, have a Tara shrine and then moving tankas around. We have Jigme Lingpa, uh, this beautiful, incredible gold tanka over it. But I'm going to suggest uh, that Jigme Lingpa move over to above the uh, audiovisual um, booth, um, <clears throat> our little mini studio, because uh, Jigme Lingpa. Um, uh, was you know discovered long chan mintic and envisions right so um uh that goes along with uh this uh audio visual thing and um jigme Lingpa was known for many uh, miraculous displays and we need some miracles like that to make uh all the it work properly don't we although uh jigme Lingpa said the one miracle an amazing miracle is to change one negative thought to a positive thought, right? That's the basic miracle. But um, there's uh, uh, a wonderful biography, uh, and now that's been published in English. Uh, English that um, uh, I can't remember quite, but uh, uh, I really treasure the Tonka of Jigme Lingpa. So we, if we move it over, and then we can put a Tara uh, Tonka right above the Tar Shrine, you know, I think that would look really good. But, um, uh, a very visionary teacher who was also known for um, incredible um, transformative experiences, right? We need that. <clears throat> Can people still hear me okay? I'm not? Yeah, okay, so. I don't know if I'm looking directly at the camera or not, right? The tendency is I, I want to look at the audience, but maybe, I don't know, the camera is really high, right? Does it have to be so high? Yes or no? Yes or no? <clears throat> uh, so I've been concerned about my health lately and others' health in the wake of uh, some uptick, particularly in Sacramento County. So that's why um, I send out uh, a letter to everybody. Um, hopefully that's listening that uh, I'd like people that come in person to uh, be fully vaccinated, you know? If um, not, that's people's right, but that's, and please watch remotely, right? Because um, after talking with, um, medical people uh, and reading too, like, uh, I don't think I'm gonna die from COVID or Delta variant, but I don't even wanna get slightly sick, you know? Like, I can't do things that way. Things, uh, we have a very small staff for Lion's Roar and I'm in private practice and uh, professional therapy things. So I don't get any, um, you know, uh, sick days, right? And there are no sick days in Dharma. So uh, I think it's just best. And I'm elderly too. I like saying that now. I'm 68. So, and we have some folks that are older than myself, right? So uh, that's, that's a concern. I don't want, I do like to see teenagers and young people, but I don't want our, um, older folks who might have some existing conditions, um, you know, not participate, right? Uh, and I continually mind people, which you can pass on that I live with a nurse who uh, is a kidney donor. So that, you know, does not, I do not want to expose her, you know, so I'm not wearing a mask now because everyone's here is vaccinated, right? And we have nice circulation and stuff like that, but 
I really um, still feel I need to be uh, not cavalier, right? That I don't need to be. Uh, besides, it's a bodhisattva activity to take care of ourselves in order to be uh, not a nuisance, right? <laughs> so maybe 95% of life is not being a nuisance and the rest maybe we can be helpful, but at least let's not be a nuisance. Let's not make it worse for others. <clears throat> uh, so that's important. Uh, uh, and I think uh, I'd like to attract uh, more people who work in the healing medical field uh, to Lions Row, right? I don't want it, uh, I want it to be a safe place too. So I don't think that the unvaccinated folks are very big in the group, um, but uh, in the past I haven't pushed it as much or required as much because it was difficult to get the vaccination, right? Um, uh, and it's all accessible now, right? And it's been a year and uh, more, year and a half. Uh, I, I was vaccinated really early because I got some extra special treatment, kind of. So I, I haven't died from, I don't think my genetic thing has been changed and I continue to watch the science, right? <laughs> and then they're young children and uh, I want kids to come back and we don't want to expose kids anymore. It's really difficult in the schools right now, right? It's hard, you know, so um, let's at least among refuge and Bodhisattva students that come, let's uh, make that kind of uh, commitment to ourselves and others like that. Um, that doesn't mean we have to be Nazis and track everybody down. <laughs> um, but maybe for the next month, so we get used to the visual, audiovisual, and used to having being with each other. Um, you know, we can uh, go another month where we are just saying, please, just uh, fully vaccinated people. What do you think? Like that. So, <clears throat> might um, you know be difficult with some people, but uh, actually the. Um, role of the teacher is to look out for the student too, right? Not just challenge, I have to support and challenge at the same time. So hopefully by doing all the reading, you, people in the Buddha Dharma study program have flexible minds after all the reading and meditation we've done so that um, when there are changes uh, in strategy, it's not like a big deal, right? It's not a change in principle, principles to be a benefit to others, to uh, promote sanity and health. That principle isn't changing, but um, becoming awake is sailing uh, into the wind, to use a boating metaphor, right? So if you're sailing directly into the wind, uh, and you have to reach the harbor or your goal, and uh, you're sailing into the wind, you have to tack both right and left, correct? So. Uh, there's no straight line um, to the goal. It, it's this way and this way. Even, even climbing a mountain for the most experienced climbers, uh, you can't totally just go straight up um, half dome, right? Can you? Can't do that, Penny, can you? Can't go straight up. You have to kind of go this way. And what's, what's the other big mountain there? Half dome and, and Yosemite. El Capitan, can you, can, can you go straight up El Capitan? You can, okay. They do, they must vary at least one or two feet. I don't know, but the metaphor is all metaphors break down, right? <laughs> Even if we say mind is like space, let's not get stuck on that, you know, that's still metaphor, right? So the flexible study and the flexible meditation allow us to actually um, do Tantra, uh, which uh, you know, also to do the culmination of Tantra, which is Mahamudra or Dzogchen. So with, but without that flexible mind and uh, basic health, we won't be able to do that kind of practice. Also, sometimes it's helpful to talk about uh, the role of the teacher. And uh, Heather uh, does a lot of um, uh, 
uh, self-initiated reading, would you say? <laughs> so uh, she is reading a book uh, uh, called uh, A Girl Drinks Bourbon. Yeah, so um, I, um, uh, who's, the, who's the teacher again? Zangar can say so. Anyway, I knew, I knew the answer. Just want to see if you know. so. Um, he's a very dynamic teacher, and I recommended the um, small, uh, short documentary called uh, uh, "Words of My Perfect Teacher." Some people have already maybe seen that documentary, right? Raise your hand. So nobody here. That would be nice to. Um, also kind of show in a movie night. Now that we have these screens, we could have movie night. Oops, right. <clears throat> so uh, I have the book, I've kind of scanned it, so I haven't written it, um, read it uh, you know, cover to cover, but uh, Heather was saying, oh, Lamala, so now I understand why you teach that way. Is that right? So, um, I'll have to read the book now, like that, <laughs> see what, like, but um, the teacher is always going, uh, knowing exactly where uh, nature uh, goes, knows the nature of mind and is free, but uh, so it's like you see where the harbor is, right, but uh, because of the nature of our delusions and um, emotional stuff, and uh, we have to tack, right? And uh, sometimes people, so you, you can't go really straightforward. Maybe very few individuals could do that. Even Mila Repa, right? Um, had struggles, right? Uh, sometimes uh, had to leave the teacher and come back and so forth and had doubts. So, uh, we need to know that there's going to be that moment where we're going like this. <clears throat> but even though you're going like this or going like this uh, down the road, uh, I don't want to see people go into the ditch. So the two difficulties, right? You know, you can't go exactly in a linear way straight towards something. At the same time, uh, you if you're like a sailing boat in a lake and you might go too far toward the shore and get on the rocks, right? So sometimes I might say this, I want to do this, and then uh, they go, okay, just do this forever. And then they're gonna hit the rocks because you've gone too far down the left, you know? It's hard to, you, it's hard to drive down right the middle of the road like that. So, you know, you're, you're bearing off, so just, they're right, you know, turn, you know, kind of do that. And then they go, okay, right, I should always turn right, turn right, turn right, turn right. So, and then they go in the ditch. But if I see them doing that, then I'll say, well, no, you got to turn left a little bit. And then sometimes people go, well, now you're changing it on me. <laughs> I was just trying to do the right thing by going right. And I ended up in the ditch. And so why were you trying to tell me to go left? So it's like that. So the teacher doesn't intentionally try to um, be tricky or um, you know, be contrary or break down your ego. That's for Sinanon and the Marines or something. Uh, it's just like, here's the goal. And uh, because of our illusions, it's hard to uh, do a straight line. Maybe uh, you know, some incredible beings like Padmasambhava uh, you know, fairly straight, but they had, you know, Padmas and Baba had difficulties with one king, right? Does anybody know what king uh, Padmas and Baba had difficulties with? Dirk knows, but I won't bother him because, you know, he's, he's uh, uh, listening intently. So what, one of the kings, you know, like uh, thought he was, uh, Padmas and Baba was being, uh, inappropriate with his daughter, I guess one of the princesses. So he tried to burn Padmasambhava in the lake, right? 
<clears throat> so uh, I think one of those lakes, or maybe the lake, is uh, in uh, India. Does anybody know the name of the lake? So Pema, right? So uh, you know, uh, you know, lake, right? So his consort um, issued Sogyal, right? So lake, you know, queen, right? <clears throat> So even Padmasambhava had um, some obstacles, right, like that. And of course, the Buddha had obstacles too, but the path uh, is still down the middle, but uh, it's going to be a little bit like this, maybe gentle, like maybe like a snake. Snakes need to do this. So we're not, we're not aiming like hunting style. One of my teachers says, don't be a hunter. We're against hunting, so we don't aim. So actually, like in monasteries, you never point like that. <laughs> you gesture like, oh, like, have you seen this tanka? You don't point. It's like, oh. <clears throat> so by uh, learning how to debate and learning contrasting viewpoints, uh, you know, we come to uh, the Maha Middle Way, you know, the Maha Madhimaka. Um, and uh, later in the uh, Buddha Dharma study program, when we've gotten through Dharma Kirti and Dignaga, uh, we can look at some of the uh, teachers who, um, because of their incredible learning, have been able to uh, see the strengths uh, of each of the different presentations and able to harmonize those. So um, some of the great teachers of the 19th century um, uh, started a Rime movement, and of course, uh, present uh, Dalai Lama and uh, Dujan Rinpoche, um, and I believe the present Karmapa really are trying to say, OK, we, we, we are benefiting things by looking from different perspectives, right? And by that way, uh, you know, going to the great middle way. Likewise, you know, in yoga, when we're doing our uh, meditation, sometimes we, have, we should swing when we sit down, right? So it's only by swinging side to side that you're gonna find the sweet spot. So starting maybe this Sunday, maybe I'll be able to do a little salon practice uh, for people that um, uh, are mature. So I'll be here. Um, regular service and then um, we'll have some food but don't eat too much and then I will do some salon tigle practice like that that would be fun right go over simple ones and then get more complex <clears throat> uh, these practices uh, still require to have a supple uh, mind both on the conventional and ultimate sense, right? So by working with the different energies, then, uh, uh, and also you know, the talks about this middle way sense. So it, it's all, it's all about bringing, uh, things into the central channel, isn't it? Does anybody know what the, the uh, name for the central channel is in Tibetan. Correct. So <laughs> we should do Dharma Jeopardy again. That would be good. <laughs> so, <laughs> so sometimes my Dimak is called Uma and then Uma for the central channel. So like that. <clears throat> and uh, coming up, maybe. Um, some people have elected to do an online uh, uh, empowerment ceremony um, with the Jonang master, right? Do you know, do you know, control, yeah. So, um, uh, I think that would be useful. The, um, <clears throat> the, uh, the Jonang tradition sometimes uh, got into fierce debate with uh, main Gelug monasteries. 
Uh, does anybody know why? <laughs> so, uh, uh, Joe Nong is very uh, uh, strong in Kalachakra, but they interpret Kalachakra from a uh, Shentong perspective, not a Rontong perspective. Does anybody know the difference between Shentong and Rontong? No. <laughs> I know some of you out in video land know, but um, so Rontong perspective is very much Nagarjuna, um, Abhudya, Palita, and uh, Chandrakirti, right? Just uh, negating uh, anything that uh, could ultimately exist from its own side uh, without negating its conventional appearance, right? That's really difficult to do. <laughs> you know, it's like, okay, how do you negate uh, that? But that's, that's the goal, like we're negating it's, uh, it's a, something existing ultimately from its own side, um, but we're not negating its uh, conventional appearance, right? So uh, even emptiness is empty, right? <laughs> but uh, Shantong uh, uh, is epitomized by what uh, Shastra um, that we completed, or maybe some of you are still reading, what, what is at least in the commentary by Jamgun Control, right, and uh, Kempo Sotra, and what, what uh, philosophic view uh, was being promoted there. No one in the audience here is raising their hands, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, of course, uh, the Uttara Tantra Shastra, um, translated in this case, um, Buddha nature, is from what the Tibetans would call the Shentong, in other words, uh, empty of other. So the Buddha nature has all these positive qualities, um, but uh, un emptiness is not understood to be negating essential positive qualities, but merely negating uh, things that are, are not intrinsic to Buddha nature, right? That's easy, isn't it? Should be. Well, actually, it's hard to get that, right? Because um, for many people, uh, even though they do lots of Dharma practice and meditation and therapy, they still feel like deep down, Something's wrong with me, right? So Tibetans sometimes describe that, or maybe it's from India, like the rock on the bottom of the ocean is surrounded by water, but uh, for millions of years, but if you brought it up and cracked it open, it would still be dry inside, right? So don't, don't be a rock at the bottom of the ocean. But uh, so uh, Buddha nature, Shastra there, uh, by Maitreya, Buddha Maitreya, as transcribed and realized by uh, Asanga, uh, is, uh, I believe, a very essential task, a text, and a necessary task to uh, finish in order to understand uh, doing Tantra. There are, however, um, Lantang or uh, um, uh, presentations of uh, Uttara Tantra Shastra also, right? So those are very profound too, um, because it's necessary to understand that uh, conventional reality, even though it's ultimately false from ultimate point of view, is pretty darn powerful from a conventional point of view, right? So if you're driving down the wrong side of the road and head on, you're having a very conventional, right? Conditional experience. Right? And it's not just going to go away by saying it's empty, right? That's, you know, so the energies, um, from my point of view, of um, you know, whether you're doing uh, your tantra practice, you might have a Shantong or Rantong point of view. You might believe that, okay, we can't say that any intrinsic qualities, even the best, exist. Um, we have to say, uh, emptiness alone is the ultimate quality, or we can say, uh, you know, mind, a luminous mind is the ultimate quality. 
uh, from a practice point of view, uh, it uh, could come down to the same thing. So uh, conventional reality does not mean uh, non-existent, right? So the biggest problem with Madhumika followers is they get kind of nihilistic. Nothing exists. I've heard people in the Sangha say that, oh, I understand Madhumaka and work, and nothing exists. I go, no, please don't, don't say that. I'll lose my llama license, you know? Go find out why you said that and come after me. So, uh, you know, so uh, when we say things exist through cause and conditions and exist um, through convention, uh, that uh, doesn't mean that they aren't functioning, right? <clears throat> Uh, whether we can find something that uh, uh, the conventions are based on that's intrinsic to the phenomena is the debate that's going on between uh, and going on in Swatantrika, right? Because Swatantrika is saying, you know, we, we're, we're really basically Madhumikans like the rest of you guys. It's just that uh, we don't think it totally can be uh, imputed, you know? Right? Otherwise, you know, apples could be cars, you know? Um, uh, but, uh, you know, there are many uh, prasangika um, arguments that, well, you know, like um, a chair could be, you know, uh, a flotation device if you're, you know, you're overturned or, you know, things that, are used for one function can be used for another. So we can't just base it on some intrinsic thing or base it on some function. Therefore, the function we're using conventionally is how it's determined, you know? So uh, these kind of debates are important um, because they leave our minds kind of flexible and we have respect for both uh, uh, what's called ordinary appearance and uh, non-ordinary world. All the teachers I've studied with uh, whether they're uh, Gelert, Mingler, Kargu, and uh, Shakya, all just come, you know, right down to uh, uh, this profound middle way. Uh, it is, it's the middle way that isn't just a logical middle way or just um, rational middle way based on uh, textual study. It's the great middle way of Mahamudra and uh, Dzogchen, right? So that's why I've asked people, you know, to, um, some um, judiciary practice so that um, when we um, uh, look at um, um, Lama Nipam, um, we can read uh, these profound texts um, with some intelligence, right? So <clears throat> when uh, reading profound texts, uh, which include like Lama Sankapa II, Padma Sambhava, which we haven't done yet, others. Uh, the idea is uh, you can't be reading from ordinary mind. If you're just reading, for example, let's say we're uh, a few of us are reading Beacon of Certainty together, but uh, and I'd like to take that up too. Uh, but uh, you can't just read it from like I'm just sitting here in Sacramento reading this book. You can't read with ordinary mind. It just doesn't work. So uh, just like if you're playing with children, um, either as a parent or a teacher or, or a friend, you can't just be, uh, I'm, I'm an adult, I'm not gonna get down on the ground and be a horse with you, that's stupid, right? So if you're stuck on being an adult and you really wanna play with, with young kids, then that's your problem, you know? So to read these profound texts, um, even the logical texts, uh, ideas, you become the right kind of uh, bodhisattva or Buddha to do it. That makes sense, right? So, uh, um, the practice uh, isn't just, uh, you know, conventional wisdom mind. Um, uh, it's also like ultimate primordial mind. And that's why so many of the teachers have said, okay, let's do, uh, Manjushri because we're after the primordial uh, wisdom and it's from that standpoint that we have to uh, study and see the texts and the actions of the Lama. So um, 
one of my main Zogchen teachers, Chochi Rimshu, in now in Denver, used to be in Fairfax, um, said if if you see your teacher as an ordinary person, you get no blessings. <laughs> if you see your teacher as a bodhisattva, you get the blessings of a bodhisattva. If you see your teacher as Buddha, you get the blessings of a Buddha. That doesn't mean that um, the conventional aspects are eliminated, right? So uh, one of the texts that uh, is useful is a uh, presentation from uh, uh, Gillick's point of view is, um, uh, you know, by the, uh, you know, Burs, Dr. Burson. Now, the, the name of the book escapes me, but how to, how to have a spiritual teacher or something like that. The title has changed. Does anybody know the, the title of that book? I think yeah. it's how to relate to a spiritual mentor. So, uh, firstly, sometimes reading Dr. Burson kind of is annoying. <laughs> but, uh, like, um, he, he doesn't translate the things the way I usually like them, but um, uh, uh, so, but you know, the book is useful, like to have, to meditate on different levels of the teacher. Like if you're doing guru yoga of highest level tantra, uh, then uh, you're working from that level, but you could do teacher yogas uh, where the teacher is uh, bodhisattva, and you know you don't have quite the um, the uh, transference, perhaps, right? So uh, uh, I'm sure we'll discover the title. Somebody will actually look it up on the phone. It's which ah, uh, very good. Relating to a spiritual teacher, correct? How how we relate to the spiritual teacher or the Lama or a preceptor or a spiritual friend is all, and tantra all along is actually how we relate to ourselves. So usually uh, we start out by being friendly to ourselves and then we go to bodhisattva and being insightful and helping and then uh, you know in tantra um, then we're being transformational uh, with ourselves and then finally, Dzogchen and Mahamudra were liberating, right? <clears throat> One of the most difficult parts for people is the Tantra style um, that uh, Trungpa Rinpoche um, talked about with some eloquence in cutting through spiritual materialism, right? <clears throat> so how did he describe the guru? Uh, does anybody remember from that book? What's the role of the guru and Vajrayana? Not, not always fierce, but sometimes. Dictator. <laughs> Dictator, you know, like you just do it. Like I'm telling you what to do, just do it, right? So um, this sounds very harsh, but it's not. If you're on climbing up the side of a cliff or something, then can you ask like where, where sh and you're with a guide who's maybe climbing above you or below you, and they say, you know, put your hand over here uh, for this handhold. Um, you know, um, I'm not going to go. Well, I have a better idea. Like, like, like that, right? So uh, this kind of style of teaching takes a lot of trust, um, and the student really has to like work through a lot of authority issues and ego issues, of course, or um, it doesn't work. For me, I like um, to know that I don't have much time to live, really. So I went, I, when I figured that out, then I just said, okay, um, uh, I'll do it your way. Likewise, with uh, Robert Nagashima, I, you know, I'm trying to do my bit to learn. I'm not saying, Robert, I, I've decided I'm going to do Magua or Shimi, or I'm going to do it this way. I just do exactly what he asks. There's no problem. I don't have any, you know, like, well, you can't, you know, like, well, I want to learn how to do it, right? So there's no reason for me to go, you don't know what you're doing. I'm making my own version of Tai Chi or, you know, or whatever, Bagua or uh, Karate, and uh, I want to do it my way and then open up my own school and become famous and blah, blah, blah. I have no interest in that at all. I just want to learn how to do it. 
<laughs> it's so simple. But uh, I know for many people it's very difficult because, of course, we have to uh, you know, first work through many issues and we have to test the teacher and test ourselves. And uh, Dalai Lama says um, maybe uh, it should take 12 years to uh, uh, you know, figure somebody out, right? Like that. Has anybody been around 12 years? Yeah, Dana. And who else? Daddy, yeah. So uh, they're very trustworthy, right? You know, so I don't have to, I can be very direct and I have absolutely have no holding back. So isn't that true? Dana, isn't that true? It is, you know, so there's no, I have no, it's very joyful. I have no uh, secondary um, voices going on like, like that, it's just transparent. So uh, that makes it easier for the teacher too, because then I don't have to like have a secondary, uh, well, was that a good strategy? Uh, maybe this, maybe that. But when we're teaching on Mahayana level or hitting on a level, of course, I have to have, you know, teaching strategy or pedagogy, like, oh, okay, this person can hear this, you know, I just can't tell them what to do. You have to say, could you please put the knife down? You're trying to cut it with the dull side. You just, you know, and if you notice it's not working on the tomato, you just, you have to flip the knife around and cut with a sharp edge. Instead of just saying flip the knife, cut with a sharp edge, right? You have to say, I know you've had a horrible day. I know your life is hard. You deserve that tomato more than anybody else in the whole world. <laughs> and I want you to have that tomato. And I, um, you know, and I, we've worked hard on the knife. And if it's not too much trouble, and if you don't mind me saying so, and I don't want to upset your, you know, your equilibrium, just could you use the sharp side of the knife? So um, actually, I don't mind doing that, you know, a lot. Um, um, but because uh, we have to say, do you mind if I interrupt, interrupt just for a second your attempts to cut the tomato, which you're turning into a big mash of goo? Um, it just takes longer. You know, it just takes longer. And then people go, Lama, you know, why didn't you tell me not to, you know, you, you made the tomato of this mash, you know, now it's going to be tomato soup and you know, so like that. So, uh, you know, just, we're just flipping it. So, so much of liberation practice, Mahamudra and Dzogchen, for example, have to do with, uh, you know, flipping our perspective. You don't have to find a different tomato uh, and you don't have to find a different knife. You know, you just use the sharp end, you know, use the sharp one and not the dull one, right? You just, oh, so that's Manjushri's sword, right? Like, okay, the sword cuts like this, right? That. So we're not improving anything. We're not like, having to change the phenomena we're paying attention to. We're just using the mind the way it should be used, right? That makes sense, easy, right? <clears throat> and of course, uh, we're generally upside down and um, we have to just hear, oh, oh, you mean that's it? I just kind of flipped the knife. But there are interesting people who, even though they hear it, of course, still using the dull side. And I get it. So um, we just have to try over and over. So even though we're here, I'll do exactly what you say, you know, you still have a hard time flipping the knife. I get it. Because um, when I'm doing um, Tai Chi something, because it's still relatively new, I can hear like, oh yeah, okay, you turn the foot this way and you do this twisting motion. That sounds really great philosophically. And then it's hard to do, right? Because I'm not used to it and it takes training, right? So all the teachers that I've studied with, uh, they have that open mind and they're willing to uh, 
all of the paths, but still it takes a long time to integrate it, you know? And that doesn't mean you're doing the technique wrong or studying wrong or the teacher's wrong or the world's wrong or this you wrong. So <laughs> it just means, yeah, it, it does. Like you don't get it the first time. That makes sense, right? Like that. So uh, in my style of teaching, it's, it's not necessary uh, to go to great lengths um, to set up uh, weird, absurd situations. Um, some teachers like heavy duty psychodrama situations um, like that, you know, so uh, I don't, you don't have to have financial power, sexual scandals to create teaching situations so people see the nature of mind, right? Some teachers teach that way. Uh, and I've been with teachers that teach that way, but I don't, you know, I don't think it's necessary. I think we can uh, teach out of uh, bodhicitta, and that's the most powerful, right? So just having fantastic experiences or dramatic um, teaching environments um, really uh, is not ultimately necessary. It's kind of boring uh, and humbling when the head chef or the chef, I mean, the mama says, you know, you, you just, Use the sharp end of a knife, not the dull side. Like, no. Yeah, okay. I know you told me that before. <laughs> like that. So <clears throat> maybe if people have a, a few times for questions and comments, um, I'd be happy to entertain. And I hope this has been somewhat helpful like that. But I do recommend, uh, I know we don't have much time for reading, but since Heather brought it up, you know, the, the um, what's the name of the guru drinks bourbon. And uh, there's another book by the English uh, uh, Yingma teacher. Um, what's his name? Uh, Nagpa, which just means, you know, Nagpa, but Nagpa Chogun, what's his name in England, right? He wrote a book called uh, uh, Dangerous Friend, right? Um, I, I kind of like it. It's a little dramatic, you know? Um, so that can be an attraction, right? So people sometimes are attracted to uh, uh, dramatic teachers who are creating a lot of drama. So it, not, you know, you finally kind of switch the knife, right? Um, but actually it's not necessary to create a lot of drama. Lots of times uh, uh, teachings are given very just, simple and whispering, you know, just very gentle, like turn the knife, right? <laughs> turn the knife over. That's it. You don't have to like like turn the knife over and you will become a chakravartan. Or first meditate yourself as chakravartan and then turn the you know just turn the knife. Oh okay. so uh, would anybody like to say something? Or final words or questions or comments, complaints. <clears throat> mm. Yes, Patty. <laughs> Don't you have to use the mic or something? Okay. Um, you really don't. Do you use the mic? Does she yes. use? Can can you give an example of turning the knife? Like a just a simple example. Of um, you know, <laughs> just just a simple example. Mm -hmm. Yes, like like just, like, just like an, an example of like a student doing something over and over that is you know the perspective they're kind of stuck on doing it a certain way and then but if they just change their perspective, I, I just wonder if you could give an example. The example for you is. Um, when you get stressed, don't leave. <laughs> and that's a profound teaching. I know, uh, you know, I know Dirk knows what I'm talking about, you know? Don't leave the nature of awareness, right? Don't walk out of the room. Just, just stay, right? Don't just leave. So it's very profound, but you hear it, it's just, it kind of sounds simple, right? Of course, you have to hear it over and over again. Just don't leave. You know, like that. Let's just turn the knife over. That's it. 
So the Null's profound pith instructions that are uh, very simple are taken to heart, then you realize that you know it's it's liberating and and Tushri sword is uh, always working, right? It's like what do they say, hot knife through warm butter, right? It just feels like you know, you know, just like you just want to have your head cut off. It's so beautiful, right? We say cut off the that dualistic conceptual thought, right? Yeah, so that's an example. Yeah. Allah. La. <laughs> So Zima, you're out there outside in your garden with the rhododendrons. Is that what is that where you are? Where are you? No, she's shaking her head. <clears throat> I'm in my office. Oh, okay. It's, it's a, a picture. Background. Yeah, it's a picture. Clever. Okay. <laughs> appearances are fine. We're happy with appearances in Vajana. You know, <laughs> one of my teachers gave me a really hard time when I said, oh, the the flowers on the altar uh, aren't real because they were plastic. That was one of those, like, you know, one, one of the cutting, one of those simple turn of knife over was, you're not even worth hitting. <laughs> you know, those kind of idiotic comments, you know, but yeah. <clears throat> Well, let's end with um, you know dedication for our patty, yeah, like that. Dedication. Due to the merits of these virtuous actions, may I quickly attain the state of a guru Buddha and lead all living beings without exception into that enlightened state. May the supreme jewel bodhicitta that has not arisen arise and grow. And may that which has arisen not diminish, but increase more and more. In the land encircled by snow mountains, you are the source of all happiness and good. All powerful Chen Rizig, Tenzin Gyatso, please remain until samsara ends. May the teachings of the Buddha flourish, and may the upholders of the teachings remain forever. May all migrators achieve happiness, and may they fulfill all their temporary and ultimate goals. Lo Song, magical display of the deep awareness of all the victorious ones, merciful giver of a stream of profound and vast instructions to the fortunate migrators. Please remain always unperishing, unchanging, unfading. Avalokiteshvara, great treasure of objectless compassion. Manjushri, master of flawless wisdom. Vajrapani, destroyer of the entire host of Maras. Sankapa, crown jewel of the snowy land sages. Losang Drakpa, I make requests at your holy feet. Let's, I'd like to read one uh, seven line prayer for Gurinche. How about that? Okay. Lama. Thank you. Thank you, Lama. Sorry. Very good. <laughs> thank you, Lama. Yeah. Bye. Thank, thank you. you, Lama. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you, Northwest, Washington. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Lama. Alabama. Yeah. That's very good. <laughs> thank you, Carmichael. Yeah. <laughs> South Stack and Pennsylvania. All good. Yeah. 
<laughs> or international. Yes, but all right. Ciao. Thanks, Dirk. We'll be talking. Yeah. I see you soon, Mama. I hope. Yeah, I hope so. Ciao. Ha <laughs> ha.